Our sun launches multiple solar storms with big solar flares, and one of those storms is Earth-directed. Those stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.com edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather this week is really beginning to ramp up and it finally looks like the sun got that solar maximum memo. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, look at all the activity. We have at least nine active regions on the Earth-facing disk, including a whole cluster of them that are just beginning to rotate into Earth view and you can see how bright the sun looks. In fact, the solar flux just over the last few days has finally crept up past 200 mark and that is a record for solar cycle 25 and a lot of amateur radio operators are definitely clapping and cheering. But this, along with this solar flux increase, also comes a lot of activity. In fact, back on the 14th, you can see region uh, 3182, wham, that old friend fires off a big solar flare along with a solar storm, and that solar storm is partly Earth-directed. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Then not to be outdone, region 3191 in the east, fires off a big solar flare and another solar storm is launched. That one looks like it's going to go north of Earth, but we might get some glancing passage from that. And then not to be outdone, 3190 joins in the fray and fires off another big solar flare and that solar storm that along with that is going to go east of Earth. But once again, we're waiting for models to see whether that's going to give us a glancing blow. So there's a ton of activity and we just are beginning to see some of these regions rotate into view, which means we could have more solar storms as well as big solar flares. Radio blackouts at the R2 level are definitely on the menu. And as old friend region 3182 rotates off of the sun's west limb, we're going to have to be dealing with a higher risk of radiation storms over the next few days. So overall, it is a very active week and all eyes are on the sun. Switching to our M flare threat meter, as we take a look at the X-ray flux, you can see we're well above the seafloor. And this is also reflected in the solar flux numbers. We've reached above 200 for the first time in solar cycle 25. In fact, I think we're sitting somewhere around 230, which is really great news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders, because that means the, the radio bands have really good propagation on Earth's day side. But that's if you can handle all the noise on the bands right now. Look at all these solar flares. In fact, we started getting the big solar flares clear back on the 6th. That's when we got the first big X-class flare, but notice that the X-class flares were short duration. In fact, the ones that we got on the 9th and the 10th, again, they didn't last all that long, but if we move forward to the 14th, notice that the big flares now are getting longer duration. That's because what's coming with these solar flares are also solar storm launches. And this is means that we're going to have some Earth-directed solar storms, possibly more than one. So all eyes are going to stay uh, on the sun and expect more uh, radio blackouts that are longer lasting, that could cause uh, more impacts on Earth's day side easily throughout the rest of this week. And now taking a closer look at the long duration big solar flares we've had over the past couple days and the impacts to radio communications, we switch back to the 14th and around 2100 hours. That was when the Pacific was in the daylight side and we had actually two flares back to back, an M3.6 and then an M4.6. These were both R1 level radio blackouts, but look at the impact to radio communications on the day side. It just absolutely takes it out and the impacts last for about an hour before things begin to come back. And then not 
talking about much later, on early on the 15th, when the daylight side was now covering Australia, you can see wham, right here, we can look at that radio blackout light up. This was an R2 level radio blackout from an of M5.6 flare. And again, it really impacts radio communications on Earth's day side and takes about an hour before things begin to come back. So amateur radio operators, this is what you're dealing with on Earth's day side. So if you have issues and you really need to get messages through, well, try the night side. Switching to our solar storm conditions, as you can see over the past week or so, we've been sitting at about unsettled to even active conditions. And this has all been because of some fast solar wind that hasn't been all that impactful. But every now and again, we get kind of like a mini solar storm that kind of grazes us to the east or to the west. Nonetheless, it's managed to kind of rattle Earth and keep it a bit on the perturbed side. And then right around the 14th, we got hit by a little bit uh, stronger fast solar wind and yet another glancing blow from a little bit of a stronger uh, uh, solar storm and that's kind of set earth off earth is ready to go and now as you can see we've actually gotten hit by yet another glancing blow starting around the 15th that managed to bump us to storm levels along with some fast solar wind and that is going to continue uh, we've been getting some gorgeous aurora at high latitudes it might kind of calm down just a little bit but it's kind of the calm before yet another storm because we have yet another glancing blow and some more fast wind now returning to that solar storm that was launched on the 14th, this is our prediction model, Enlil. This is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity. You're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And you can watch that solar storm being launched, and it looks like that solar storm is definitely going to the west of Earth. But right around the 19th, you can see it actually clipping Earth. It's going to be a glancing blow. And that's when the solar storm itself hits. But just prior to that, there's actually kind of an enhancement. And this is due to some fast solar wind that is kind of uh, like a fast solar wind chaser of this storm. So we're actually going to see a bit of an impact starting around the 18th. So war photographers, don't wait for the 19th because we could definitely see some impacts and some aurora building on the 18th and we could actually have a show maybe possibly through the 20th before things calm down. So enjoy that and keep your batteries charged because it could be a lot of fun. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun just a tiny bit from the side. And as we take a look at Stereo A's view, you can see region 3182 rotating off of the west limb in Stereo's view, and that should kind of orient you. So when you take a look at the east limb, look at all the bright regions and all the activity. Do you see all the solar storm launches? It's unbelievable how much is going on. So that tells you that we've got these big regions in here that are definitely big flare players, and they are going to continue to launch solar storms. Plus, if you take a look in the east limb right on the north, you can see yet one more region that has not quite rotated into Earth view yet. And it looks like it also could be a big solar storm player. So Aurora photographers, get ready because we could definitely have some more activity over the next week or two. And amateur radio operators, expect that solar flux to stay well above 200, possibly for two more weeks. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon. And by the 20th, the moon is just going to be a sliver at about 3% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, including, I don't know, maybe some aurora, well, now is your perfect chance. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we have been dealing with some fast solar wind and some minor solar storm glancing blows here and there that have really kind of rattled Earth's magnetic shield. And with that other, the next solar storm expecting to hit right around the 19th, it really could bump the Earth's conditions up to storm levels pretty easily. In fact, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active to possibly minor storm conditions. And we do have up to about a, a 30 to 60 percent chance of a major storm. We're just going to have to kind of see how, it, how the Earth's uh, field reacts to it. But aurora photographers at high latitudes, you could easily get a decent show in through the 20th before things begin to calm down. Now, mid latitudes, the story is not quite so clear. We do have, we are expecting uh, unsettled to active conditions, but we do have a decent chance for, for storm conditions. And that really, again, is going to depend upon how much of a glancing blow this sto solar storm really gives us. Nonetheless, we could definitely 
definitely get some aurora shows at mid latitudes on the 18th and the 19th and with that uh very dark moon that means it's cooperating and aurora could really stand out Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have a lot of big flare players on the Earth-facing disk right now, and that is leading to a quite a high risk for uh, radio blackouts. In fact, NOAA's giving us about a 55% chance of uh, R1 to R2 level blackouts over uh, the next couple days, with about a 15% chance of these X-class flares, which is an R3 level radio blackout. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, be aware, this is why the the chart is orange right now radio blackouts are just a, a thing that you're going to have to live with on earth's day side now nice thing is we do have solar flux that's sitting well into the 200s this means decent radio propagation on earth's day side however gps users you don't like it when the flux gets this high it does cause issues for you down at low latitudes so especially be careful in the afternoon and in the post dusk uh, hours you could have a lot of issues with gps reception now also because we do have region 3182 that is rotating to the sun's west limb right now we have a really elevated chance of getting radiation storms we're, we're in the green right now sitting at the d1 level but we could have a radiation storm here over the next uh, couple days and possibly throughout the rest of this week so if you're a pilot definitely pay attention to the uh, ikao advisories and uh, just be aware that both communications and navigation can be impacted so the space weather this week is getting very exciting. We have a lot of regions in Earth view that are firing big solar flares. And as of the last 24 to 48 hours, we've been getting long duration solar flares, which means we're also getting big solar storms being launched again. One of those is actually Earth directed or at least partially Earth directed and could give us some exciting times with some aurora down to mid latitudes around the 18th and 19th. So aurora photographers, definitely get ready. We could have a decent show. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, while we should celebrate the fact that we're over 200 in the solar flux, you should definitely notice it in the radio bands on Earth's day side, but you should also notice that you're dealing with radio propagation with lots of noise and radio blackouts on Earth's day side. So perhaps nighttime would be a little bit better for radio propagation over the next week and possibly two weeks until these regions kind of calm down and rotate to the sun's far side. And now GPS users, well, this is not the best forecast for you because not only is solar flux up into the 200s, which means you have issues with reception down at low latitudes, especially, especially near dawn and very much near dusk. So be aware that you could have reception issues during those periods. And of course, on Earth's day side, those radio blackouts don't help you very much. And of course, if we get aurora from the solar storm that's going to hit around the 18th and 19th, be sure to stay away from aurora as well. So there's a lot of keep out zones for you. And it's just hang in there. Things will get better, I promise. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.